Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we were introduced to different groups of instructions and I told you in that session that this session onwards, we will be learning about the data transfer group of instructions. So as promised, from this session onwards, we will be focusing on the instruction types and once we learn about a particular instruction type, thereafter we will also learn all the different variations or the actual instructions of that particular type. So in this session, we are going to learn about the instruction types MVIR, D8 and MOVR1, R2. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, at first we will learn about the instruction type MVIR, D8 and thereafter we will learn about the instruction type MOVR1, R2. Remember, both of these types fall under the group data transfer instructions. So let's begin with the instruction type MVIR, D8. Now coming to the instruction type MVIR, D8, as you can notice, we have got a mnemonic in here. Now it is MVI. Let's learn what it stands for. It stands for move immediate. Now what does it mean? It means we are supposed to load a register with an 8-bit value. Let's now decode the instruction. We have got MVI, the mnemonic which stands for move immediate. Then we have R. Now what is this R? This is a register. Now what register we are talking about? Well, for that, let's take the incomplete programmer's view of the 8085 microprocessor. As you can see, I have not included all the registers that we have in the programmer's view. For this example, I am going to use only the GPRs and the accumulator. And the reason for that is, this instruction pertains to only these registers. That is, this R specifies any of these registers, A, B, C, D, E, H, and L. Now what is this D8? It is the 8-bit value. In other words, D8 is the data of 8-bit. Let's now look at the size of this instruction. Well, MVIR is of 8-bit and D8 is supposed to be of 8-bit. So cumulatively, this entire instruction falls into the category of 2 bytes long instructions. Now, this is the instruction type. What are the different instructions? Well, they are MVIA, D8, MVIB, D8, MVIC, D8, MVID, D8, MVIE, D8, MVIH, D8, and MVIL, D8. Now, what do they mean? Whenever we will execute any one of these instructions, the data of 8 bit, which will be mentioned within the instruction itself, will be moved immediately into that particular register. So as you can see, this is the type and we have got seven different instructions in here. Now for the D8 part, these eight bits will be specified in the instruction. What about the mnemonics? Well, for these, we have got different opcodes and the opcodes are 3E, 06, 0E, 16, 1E, 262E. Now these are two digit hexadecimal numbers, in other words, 8 bit binary. Now this particular opcode, that is 2E in hexadecimal, is actually 8 bit, which corresponds to the MVIL part of the instruction. The rest of the 8 bits will be provided in the instruction itself as D8. Now you might be wondering do we have to remember these opcodes? Well, not really. Remember, all these instructions are specific to the 8085 microprocessor. And within the documentation of that, all the opcodes are mentioned and these are fixed. Also, at a later point of time in our course of learning, I'll tell you how to decode the opcodes for a particular instruction. So this is all about the MVIR D8 instruction type. Remember, this is move immediate and that's the mnemonic for it. R stands for any of these seven registers and D8 is the data 
which will be immediately fed to the particular register. So that was all about the instruction type MVIR, D8. Let's now learn about the next instruction type MOV, R1, R2. Now coming to the instruction type MOV, R1, R2. Here the mnemonic MOV, it stands for move. Now what does it mean? It means we are supposed to load the register R1, that is this register, which will be specified in the instruction with the value in the register R2, that is, the second register which will also be specified in the instruction itself. So let's now decode the instruction. Here, as you can see, we have got the mnemonic MOV, which stands for move. And then we have got R1, which is a register, as I mentioned earlier. Thereafter, we have the separator comma. And finally, by the end, we have R2, which happens to be another register. Now, what register we are talking about? Well, the same registers which are in this incomplete programmer's view of 8085. Now, in this instruction, R2 happens to be the source of the data, which is to be moved to R1, that is, the destination. Let me illustrate the functionality of this instruction with an example. Say within the accumulator register, that is A, Initially, we have the data A3. Observe, it is a hexadecimal value, so two-digit hexadecimal is eight bits. Now say, within the B register, that is the general purpose register B, we have got the value 7E. Now if we want to move the content of the B register into the accumulator register, we will need this instruction, that is MOV A comma B. In this specific instruction, B is the source and the accumulator register or A is the destination. So if the 8085 microprocessor executes this code, the content within the B register, that is 7E, will be copied to the accumulator register. Notice, after the execution of this instruction, the content within the accumulator register is 7E. Now did you notice something interesting? We are calling it move, but in reality, we are copying the data from the general purpose register B to the special purpose register that is the accumulator. So although we are calling it move, we are basically copying. Now this instruction, MOVR1, R2, it falls under the category one byte long instructions. I hope you remember. There are 202 one byte long instructions in 8085. Now remember, this is the instruction type. In reality, there will be multiple instructions. Now, if we take R1, that is the destination, to be the accumulator register or A, and say R2 can be any other register, including A, in that case, we are going to have seven different instructions. Notice MOV A comma A, MOV A comma B, so on till MOV A comma L. Now in place of R1, if we consider the register B, that is the general purpose register, in that case too, we will have the first instruction as MOV B comma A, and the last, that is the seventh instruction, is going to be MOV B comma L. Now we can see similar patterns of the same instruction type if in place of R1, we consider all the different GPRs, C, D, E, H, and L. So clearly, if you notice, we have got seven different registers. And for all those seven registers, in the place of R2, we can also have seven different variations. In total, seven multiplied by seven, there is 49 instructions are there for this type, MOV R1, R2. So clearly, like I mentioned earlier, remembering all these opcodes are useless and we don't really need that. So that was all about the instruction type MOV R1, R2. Remember, here the mnemonic MOV stands for move. And in the instruction MOV R1, R2, the register which is placed after the comma is the source and the register R1, we may choose any of these GPRs for the place of R1. And the same can be stated for R2 as well. 
However, R1 is the destination. Also, this instruction holds only one byte memory space within the memory. So in this session, we cover the topics, the instruction type MVIR, D8. Do remember, the data of 8-bit is going to be moved immediately to the register, which will be specified this position R. Coming to the next instruction type, which we also have covered, MOVR1, R2. Here also, R2 is the source and R1 is the destination. And although we are calling it move, we are basically performing copy. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about two more instruction types of the data transfer group. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.